Hey everybody, it is me. It's Steve Simons, your old buddy, uh, doing another quick uh, podcast episode. Today is going to be kind of a lightning round, try to get in and out, nobody gets hurt, but cover some topics that are definitely on my mind and certainly should be uh, given thoughtful consideration by you as well. If you are a e-commerce entrepreneur, if you are an Amazon seller, I think these types of topics are things that you as the CEO, as the leader, or even as a interested party in your organization, you should pay attention to these topics. Uh, and that's why we're talking about it today. So this is episode number 156 of the awesomers.com podcast series. Just go to awesomers.com slash 156. And we'll put in some of the show notes, details, and links that we talk about here today. So let's dive right in. So first of all, um, I've been on vacation, as I mentioned in, in episode 155. On holiday with my kids, I did some seller meetups and so forth along the way and actually scouted some venues for some potential future conferences or masterminds. Uh, but I had enjoyed my time with my kids. You know, really hanging out with my kids is kind of my favorite thing to do. My second favorite thing is hanging out with entrepreneurs. So I, it's fun when I get to combine those interests um, and, and those passions. So, but while I was away, uh, the great Danny Sullivan at the Seller Sessions podcast, and Danny's been a podcaster in this Amazon selling space specifically for, for several years, and is one of the leaders and one of the most generous guys on the planet when it comes to contributing to the community. You know, podcasters, we, we don't make money. Um, this is uh, kind of for the love of the game, so to speak. Yes, maybe downstream we can sell ads or this or that, but uh, we do it out of the passion, and uh, I think Danny does it out of the goodness of his heart. And kudos to him for putting such a nice podcast together. So if you haven't already, go to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to Seller Sessions and listen to Danny's sage wisdom and tactical actionable advice that he delivers every single week, uh, at least once or twice. Uh, so, but he's also launched uh, just recently, uh, particularly while I was on vacation, something called a Seller Poll. And again, on the awesomers.com slash 156 page, I will put in a link to the seller poll and basically it allows Amazon sellers to go in and either nominate or vote for existing nominee nominees in a number of different categories. And what I like about this idea is that it's really, we've thought about doing this at empowery, for example, is having some sort of award mechanism to kind of reward the, the, the standout players in, in our space. And for sure, uh, every industry kind of needs some sort of awards thing to rally around. So I'm pleased that Danny took the leadership on this and that uh, Ping Pong helped him support it. Uh, Ping Pong, by the way, is an uh, approved and authorized Empowery uh, vendor and, and alliance supplier. So if you haven't already, go to Empowery and you can sign up for Ping Pong and get um, some special group buying benefits. Uh, so I'm thrilled that Ping Pong stepped up and, and is helping support this thing. And I'm also appreciating the leadership that Danny has shown, which is not uncommon. He's, he's, uh, he's that kind of guy. Uh, I think further, he took himself out of the equation. Uh, so he's not allowing his companies or himself to be nominated, which, uh, you know, I think was unnecessary, but it just shows his very transparent nature and what a good guy he is. So some of the categories include... Um, things like outstanding contribution, which I have to say, I was um, pleased and honored to be nominated in. Uh, actually, somebody, um, not me, by the way, uh, put in my name as somebody who's uh, been an outstanding contributor to the, the Amazon community. And I uh, thank whoever that person is and whoever's voting for it, because um, uh, on one of Danny's recent podcasts, he says I was uh, still mentioned in one of the leaderboards, which is both a surprise and an honor uh, just to be nominated, honestly. And I'll go further to say that the awesomers.com podcast was listed. I think the Empowery event um, and even the Empowery co-op under different category headings. So I'm not going to go through each of the categories, but I do want to encourage you go to awesomers.com slash 156 and click through and vote today. If you haven't already, it just requires a Facebook login. That way they can track, make sure people only vote once so that it's fair and uh, keep the skullduggery to a minimum. So go vote in the seller sessions, seller poll as soon as possible. And uh, listen, you wanna vote for me, I will accept that uh, recognition. I'll thank you. 
and I will send you $5 in the mail. No, I will not bribe you, but I will appreciate you. And um, whether you want to uh, vote for the Awesomers podcast or the Empowery uh, organization or any of the other things that I'm supporting, uh, I welcome that support. And, you know, it's not really for me, although uh, I appreciate, you know, kind of people saying, hey, you know, you helped me. That, that makes me feel good. It makes me want to do more. So cool. I'm, I'm a human. I like recognition. Uh, but I, it's really, you know, when I think about the teams that are helping out with Awesomers and the teams that are helping out with Empowery, I like them to get recognized. So I, I'm hoping that their efforts deserve your, your recognition and your vote. So please go vote um, as soon as possible. Uh, but I want to talk about a couple things that have been happening in the courts that I think are very, very important for sellers. Now, this one, this first one is not directly related to Amazon sellers, but just in a recent case, uh, within the last uh, 48 hours of me recording this, uh, there was a case basically where the, the courts, I forget which, maybe it's the Ninth Circuit or whatever, but one of the courts, a federal court, said that uh, basically that scraping publicly available data, in this case it was on LinkedIn, is not against the law that it doesn't matter what people's terms of service are, it's not against the law. And so the people trying to shut down, uh, so LinkedIn was trying to shut down companies who are scraping their publicly available data. And uh, essentially the court said, no, you can't do it. It's public, uh, screw you guys. It's, it's not, you know, you can't restrict it. Now LinkedIn's probably going to appeal and just fight this thing all the way up. But I think it's a good precedent. And I think it does have potential ramifications uh, with regards to Amazon's terms of service. So, you know, Amazon forbids sellers or software makers from scraping Amazon's website. Well, that's just crazy. It's just absolutely unacceptable and it's unnecessary. So my dear friends at Amazon, uh, you know, I know dozens of you guys. I respect you guys. I, I like you guys. Uh, there's some of you guys that, that are not helping sellers and I don't like you just to be clear. But by and large, I think most of the people at Amazon are trying to do the right thing. They just do it so slow that it drives me insane. But this, this restriction against scraping our own listing or scraping the reviews so we can understand what people are saying and analyze things is, is well, it's just idiotic and it's unnecessary. So I want to just tell you, Amazon, you know, at some point your day is going to come. Some case there's going to be um, asserted against you or, or um, brought against you to say that we should be able to scrape our listings. We should be able to see when our listings change. We should be able to check when these fake reviews come in or the fake upvotes come in. We should have the right to monitor our listings and archive the history. Sometimes it's black hat players who make changes on our listings. You know, I've, we've seen pornographic images put into listings uh, where black hat people are putting them into a competitor's listings to try to get the listing taken down. We've seen, you know, listing changes to put a competitor's brand name into the product instead of our own brand name. Um, we've seen all kinds of variations of this. And it's fair to say a seller should be able to defend themselves. You know, once it's changed in the Amazon database, it's hard to know what the history looked like. So having archives and images and the, the HTML, the hard copy, of every detail, every review, every aspect of your listing is fair game in my opinion. And I'm just telling you, Amazon, you know, as much as I love the platform, I love what you guys have done to create opportunity for entrepreneurs. I want you to be accountable for reasonableness. I want you to be accountable for fairness. And it is fair for uh, marketplace sellers to defend themselves. Um, I'll give you an example. When some of these um, changes happen. Uh, maybe it's uh, nefarious competitor activity. Maybe it's just Amazon warehouse deciding they're going to upload some stupid new image. Okay, guys. Uh, so the computer today is having some technical difficulty. So I'm having to cut this thing up into different chunks, um, which is not awesomer. But anyway, my point about this, this whole situation is this. Regardless of what the origin of these issues are, when it comes to listing changes or fake reviews, good reviews, bad reviews, et cetera, as a seller, as an active participant in customer satisfaction, we need to take proactive measures to um, make the appropriate changes and keep the, the truth, justice, and, and 
all of the data consistent and clear. It is, I've had cases where Amazon, you know, we complain about, hey, a bunch of reviews disappeared. And Amazon's like, well, what reviews? You know, tell us what reviews you're missing and then we'll go research it. Well, if you don't archive the reviews, how are you supposed to know? So there's a lot of reasons why that scraping is important. So anyway, that's case one. LinkedIn lost that one. Um, scraping data is not against the law. And um, I think Amazon's day is coming on that as well. So in another case, in a totally unrelated matter, the state of South Carolina won uh, in their massive um, case against Amazon, basically saying Amazon is liable for the marketplace seller back taxes, sales taxes, on the transactions that happen on the marketplace. South Carolina said, hey, Amazon, you put this marketplace into place, but you were really controlling the whole operation anyway, so don't, you know, don't try to you know, slough off this responsibility of sales tax. You're a retailer, you have the scale, you have the sophistication, you should have been collecting the whole time, give us our money. And I think this case, again, probably Amazon will, will appeal it and so forth, but this case is a very, very important precedent for Amazon sellers, particularly being chased by California or Washington or New York and these rabid dogs that are the state sales tax collectors. And I, I'm not afraid to call them that. They are absolutely mindless zombies trying to beat down entrepreneurs who really did not have the responsibility to collect those taxes. Uh, based on the way the Supreme Court was, there was no economic nexus at the time. It was a physical presence thing. And Amazon's third-party warehouses, in my opinion, are not physical presence. Anyway, without getting into the legal particulars, Amazon should have collected the sales tax. Amazon is liable for that sales tax. And let's get this thing cleaned up and get it off the backs of small mom and pop uh, e-commerce players that are just trying to earn a living. Um, and again, you know, Amazon, I love the marketplace. I love the opportunities you're creating, but pushing off the responsibility to sales taxes onto tiny sellers is unreasonable. Um, so I think this South Carolina precedent is important and good. For those states that may be tuning in or listening, I want you guys to pay close attention. Instead of having this nonsense 200 transactions or $200,000 economic nexus uh, rule, get rid of the 200 sales. Make it a number and make it a reasonable number. I think a half a million dollars is a reasonable number. If an out-of-state seller sells a half a million dollars in your state, then we can afford to register and so forth. But less than that, the actual amount of taxes that are being collected and then having to be administered and filing all the forms and, and so forth, it's just not worth it. It's not even possible economically for small, tiny businesses that sell 200 sales at 2,500 bucks each to put together whole sales tax compliance for your tiny little state. Even if you're a big state, 200 transactions at an average sale of 25 bucks on Amazon is not enough to chase us for make the economic threshold higher and you'll find voluntary compliance rapidly and you'll find support of people like myself and the Empowery Co-op and the Osmers uh, community out there. So um, I do think this is a good precedent because back taxes are not the responsibility of marketplace sellers who didn't even know that they existed. Uh, they should be the responsibility of Amazon. Uh, quick notes about the uh, trade war between the US and China and some of the tariff situations. There are continuing ratcheting up efforts on both sides in China and the US, which includes increasing the tariff amount. So uh, one of the groups of tariffs are gonna go, they started at 10% last year, they went to 25% in May, they're gonna go to 30% on October 1st. And anybody who thinks it can stop there, you're making a mistake, it can go higher. Now these only apply to products imported in the United States. So I'm telling any seller, if you have a good product and a good brand in the US, I'm telling you a couple of things. One, negotiate aggressively with your suppliers. And I've talked about this on past episodes and webinars about the tactics that we use. So go find those and learn about those. So that means get tough in China so that you can uh, keep buying there as long as possible. Second, look outside of China. Over the past few weeks, we found new sources in Thailand, Vietnam, Cambodia, Malaysia, and many more. Um, it's, it's not that hard. And I know people have asked me to do some, uh, some episodes about that and I'll try to get there, but really I don't have a great deal of time to get too deep into that. But I can tell you the people who join the Lee Ron and Steve.com trip to China 
I'll be getting into very detailed um, methodologies about how we diversify into other countries. So that's a couple methods, right? Negotiate with your current China supply chain, uh, diversify your supply chain into other countries. But another thing, and a great diversification move, is to simply sell that product, the same product you're buying, in new marketplaces like the EU. And go to the empowery.com slash go global and join that program. If you have a brand that's good enough, basically within 30 days from approval, you can be selling in the EU, all pan-EU marketplaces with no VAT paperwork, with no headaches, with no pain, because we've partnered up with a, a very good group there to handle the localization of your business, to handle the distribution of your, your products and so forth. You earn all the profits and there's just a flat fee that you pay. Long term, it's going to go to a rev share. But today, the early birds get a flat fee. So get in there while you can. This is an unprecedented opportunity for you to diversify your marketplaces and sell in this Christmas season. If you act now, you still have time to get your product in before the main Christmas holiday. But the, the days, you know, the clock's ticking. Days are wearing down. So those are just a few things that you can do to kind of offset some of your, uh, the, the Trump trade war or the trade war between the U.S. and China. And again, for clarity, I, as much as this hurts me and my clients and my friends, I think it's necessary. We have to combat economic aggression that is um, having very difficult and long lasting consequences on the American economy. And really, it's just about fairness. China, why don't you buy more stuff from the U.S. instead of it being a $500 or $500 billion pipeline of U.S. money directly to you? This goes for other countries, by the way. This is happening. China has surpluses with virtually every country. And I think that that should be more fair. China protects its markets. They put all kinds of rules and restrictions on their own markets instead of playing fair. What we give you, you should give us. That's all I'm saying. And I'm talking about not over, not putting crazy duties on American-made products or Canadian-made products or Australian-made products, German-made products. Treat us fair. And believe it or not, China's crying like a stuck pig saying that the U.S. is bullying them when they're just saying, hey, stop completely taking advantage and negotiate a deal where you'll still have the advantage. Uh, you know, I love China. I have a great Chinese team. I have great factories and relationships in China that go back you know, nearly 20 years, and it'll be okay at the end of the day, but it should be more fair. Uh, it shouldn't just be one-sided. And finally, I want to just talk about a couple things. So at Empowery, they've got the uh, empowery.org. Oh, by the way, I, I think I may have misspoke that um, link early, empowery.org slash go global, uh, empowery.org slash Costco discovery. These are programs that can help you uh, break some of the paradigms of normal Amazon selling and get into other marketplaces or other channels. Uh, Parsimony.com has the new free monitoring system that I talked about in episode 155. Go check that out now. It's free. Let me let that sink in. Free. That's a pretty good price. Go check it out now. Parsimony.com and you'll see the Parsimony free with live um, every 30 minute monitoring alerts and we're going to be rolling out some workflows where you can actually manage the projects and tasks when you get one of those alerts with your entire team. Your whole team can be in that software um, at one time and kind of monitor and, and see how things go. Uh, there's a ticketing system. There's all kinds of things built in. But baby steps. It, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll have bugs and it'll have issues, but it's really cool. Uh, Simo Global is doing photos for sellers all the time. If you go to simoglobal.com, click on the services or engagements tab, you'll see that you can have photos taken very inexpensively, nice high res photos. 90% of the photos are the 188 or $199 engagement for nine photos. And it's very high quality photos done very quickly. And finally, um, if you want to go with Lee Ron Hirschkorn, Andy Slammons, Melissa Simonson, Oksana Brookie, uh, Belle Isabella, uh, and myself to China, go to LeeRonAndSteve.com. There's so much stuff happening, everybody, that I just want to share these things that are exciting, they're fun, and I hope you guys are paying close attention. I also ask you to go, uh, when you have the chance, to subscribe, 
share and review the awesomers.com podcast. So this is episode 156, awesomers.com slash 156 for show notes and details and even some of the links I've talked about. Let's get on that right now, everybody. And apologies for the uh, technical glitch in the middle here, but I'll try to clean that up in post. Thanks again, everybody. See you later.